சார் வணக்கம் சார் சீனிவாசன் சார் வணக்கம் சார் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் போனீங்களா குட் ஈவினிங் சார் குட் ஈவினிங் சார் குட் ஈவினிங் சார் மஞ்சுநாத் சார் ஹஸ் கம் we have uh, both the students here i think uh, sundarnathan is ready with this is kartikeyan is just uh, getting himself in a place where it is let me uh, see so sundar uh, yes. your uh, dr kalita is joining ma yes sir he is joining sir i have okay. sent him the link also okay do we need to wait for sir or you want to call him i'll check with him once sir Yes, because if he is going to join, I will wait for a minute. You please yes. check with him if he is yes, joining. Yes, yes. Anjunath, sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Very good evening. Good evening, sir. Karthi, are you ready, ma? Sir, good evening, sir. Sir, he has already joined, actually. That Oppo A5 is collected, sir. Which one, ma? Which one, ma? Oppo A5. Uh, sir, Kalita, sir, good evening. Sir, in silent. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Your video is not visible. Hello. Sundar Nathan, you can yes, start sir. your presentation, Sundar Nathan. You please introduce yourself. Uh, Kalita, okay. sir, are you with us? Uh, yes, yes. Sir, thank you very much for permitting your students, sir. Yes, thank you. For giving the... Thank answer. you very much. Is sir, you, are, you, can, you can switch on your camera and ask questions, sir. Okay, sure. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, shall I start? Please start. Please introduce yourself. Good, good evening, everyone, to all my respected teachers and my colleagues. I am Dr. D. Sundar Nathan. I am the final year TNP surgery trainee in downtown hospital, Gawati, Assam. So, I'll be presenting a case of peripheral venous disease. So, going ahead with the presentation. A 52-year-old female, a homemaker from Guwahati, came with chief complaints of dilated veins over both lower limbs in 6 years and pain over both lower limbs in 3 years. On elaborating the history of present illness, patient was apparently normal 6 years ago, following which she developed dilated veins over inner aspect and front aspect of left leg initially, followed by the same in the right leg. Initially, the veins were just visible and they gradually dilated, confined to the ankle region. And later, they progressed from ankles above up to the inner aspect of thighs now. The veins are prominent on standing and walking and they disappear on lying down and leg elevation. There was associated occasional pain in both lower limbs since three years, which was insidious in onset in ankle and calf region. It was a dull aching pain. usually starts during the day and it increases towards the end of the day on prolonged standing. It relieves on taking rest and elevation of the limb and no rest pain. History of present illness. Patient also developed swelling and discoloration of skin around the ankles in both legs and feet since two years. History of itching on and off over the lower third of the legs with one episode of scratching. over the lower part of left leg which bled and healed spontaneously uh, there is no history of prolonged immobilization trauma bursting pain increased pain on walking pain or heaviness in the abdomen or any other systemic symptoms comorbid history she is a known case of hypothyroidism on treatment for 10 years on thyroxin 50 mcg once daily No history, of, no history of major ailment in the past. Personal history, she is non-vegetarian by diet. 
not a smoker or alcoholic normal bowel and bladder habits obstetric and menstrual history p1 l1 uh, normal vegetarian delivery 23 years ago attained menopause 6 years ago and there is no history of ocp intake or hormone replacement therapy family history no history of similar illness in family members treatment history no history of major surgeries in the past for the above complaints she met a doctor 2 years back for which she was advised stockings but discontinued due to non compliance no history of injection treatment for the dilated veins allergy history uh, no known allergy to food substances or drugs on uh, summary uh, actually there's a small mistake a 52 year old female homemaker presented complaints of dilated tortuous veins over both legs which becomes prominent of standing and walking disappears on lying down occasional taking pains in sleepless and swelling with discoloration of skin in lower legs than feet this history is suggestive of a venous disorder of both lower limbs namely varicose veins kitna complaint hai kitne mila hai ye 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 laakon ka chhota hai ye laakon ka kam wait 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 dr debara ji please mute yourself Well, sir, kindly mute. Yes, Sundar. Please, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I am done with the history. Should I continue? No, no, wait, no, no. Wait, no, no. Wait, yeah. wait. We wait. want to ask you about yes, it. Just go back to your first slide, please. Sundar, can you hear? Hear me? Go to the yes, first slide. Yes, sir. I have. This is the first slide, sir. No, before that. The title slide. Yes, sir. <laughs> Peripheral venous disease. What do you mean by that? Have you heard of this term before? It's a new term coined by you. Sir, uh, actually. what do you mean by peripheral venous disease what does it encompass i mean we have not i have not come across this yes. term that's why i'm asking you it is new to me also sundar we have not heard ah, that's why is was was it told by a professor to put by this because we really respect the teachers your professor asked yes, put or uh, you did it no say i did it sir ah, right well there's nothing for peripheral venous disease yes sir the so, no note question the tail okay yeah yes, next sir. slide please next thing dilated means pain over both limbs where about in the limbs so in the legs sir go to the next slide that will be in giving okay yes so why why do you think there is pain in a venous disease next slide please let's let's pain? see how you, how you describe the pain yes sir this is a pain this is a okay. so so why do you think there is pain in in venous disease so i am just talking about venous disease usually it is because of the increasing uh, venous hypertension uh, especially the pressure increases mainly in the ankle and calf region so because of that increased pressure there is uh, release of uh, white cells and molecules from the vasculature which so they cause pain release of white cells will cause pain so it goes and deposits around the veins and it causes pain sometimes the dilated so, veins which so stretches the every morning every morning every morning when he gets uh, when the lady gets up the white cells go start depositing around the veins and she gets pain and at night the white cells go away Why is Mainly because of the venous congestion, sir? Right. So just say that. Just because of venous congestion, yes. right? Yes. So there's venous congestion. So, uh, but why do why does venous congestion lead to pain? It's just lying there, right? This congestion, this decreased flow back into the decreased flow, uh, sir. Yes. The flow return to the heart. So why do you think there is pain? What could be the cause of pain? 
stretching of the fascia because of the dilated veins. Mm. Okay, this is this is because of uh, restricted flow out of the leg. No, so this if there is flow is out uh, is restricted. The flow into the leg will will also be restricted, isn't it? Yes, sir. After some time, so that causes the pain. Okay. Okay. Sir. Now, how will you? How will this venous pain? How will it differentiate from an arterial pain? So arterial arterial pain initially uh, when the patient is trying to walk, initially there is no pain. Once the patient starts to walk, patient develops pain after some time. and uh, if he continues to walk sometimes the pain reduces when it is class 2 but in venous pain the uh, pain usually doesn't start in the beginning but once the patient is on prolonged standing or working for a long time towards the end of the day slowly the pain starts and becomes severe and venous pain usually relieves after taking rest sir immediately arterial pain does arterial pain arterial pain also uh, relieves after taking pain is it down and the pain disappears and uh, when the limb is elevated the venous pain comes down but whereas arterial pain comes down when the limb is put down from the bed so venous pain will usually be towards the end of the day towards the end of the day right it's not it's not that walking is going to cause a lot of pain and it is relieved by elevation of the limb yes okay next slide so develop swelling and discoloration around the skin around the ankles why do they develop this discoloration of skin around the ankles sir uh, due to the venous congestion and increasing pressure within the veins uh, there is extravasation of rpc is outside the venous compartment it goes into the subcutaneous tissues where they are broken down to hemocellulin which causes the pigmentation so why does it happen around the ankles why not around the foot why not at the tip of the tip of the toes why the venous ankle hypertension is maximum around the area sir why is it around maximum around the ankle because of lot of perforate is concentrated in the area no because the whole pressure the whole venous pressure is concentrated at the ankle right at the ankle huh. the, the 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 foot is has got a very thick fascia Yes, it's supported. Here, it's not supported. So, what is this area called where this thing happens? Gaiter area, sir. Why is it called gaiter? What do you mean by gaiter? Sir, that is the. Why is it? I forgot. Actually. Okay, gaiter. Gaiters. When you when you go horse riding. Right, so where well, this, this kind of the patta there, well, that's called a gaiter. Okay. Yes. Sir. So why does it happen on the medial side? Why does why does it not happen on the lateral side? Why is the gaiter area on the medial side? Isn't it? Yes, sir. So why does it happen on the medial side, not on the lateral side? So the veins are mainly concentrated on the medial side, sir. Right. So great softness and the is on the medial, medial side. side. So please, sir, carry on. The you know, sir, sir, in this one, what is told? The swelling the duration is since six years. Well, summarizing, you told twenty years. Is it six years or twenty years? No, no, six years. It was actually a mistake. Initially, the patient was telling like that. Then again, I went and verified, so I changed it actually. So longer the duration goes, more in favor of simple varicose veins, isn't it? And complicated yes, varicose sir. veins. Yes, sir. So the next go to the next slide then. Yes. Sir. Okay. He had one episode of of bleeding. Just go back. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, suppose the the uh, the varicosity is bleed. What is the treatment for it? Sir, four layer compression bandaging and leg elevation, sir. right so it it stopped right yes sir okay history of itching why does this itching happen 
sir itching it is mainly because of the extravasation of the mast cells in the subcutaneous region which releases histamines uh, which causes itching sir okay okay so uh, what are the theories behind this are there are two theories what are the two theories behind this one is a fibrin cuff theory and the other is a white cell trapping theory sir okay so what what are they what are they so fibrin cuff theory is the white cells migrate to the space around the veins in the subcutaneous space and the fibrin uh, deposition happens so if white are are is white uh, white blood cell similar to fibrin or are they different no so white blood cells platelets everything they extra vessel sir and fibrin so one is fibrin cuff theory other is white cell trapping theory sir okay so uh, are they different or both in both the things fibrin and white blood cells and platelets no sir they are different sir different so what is the tell me about the fibrin cuff theory so fibrin cuff actually the fibrin which is deposited it forms a cuff around the vein sir so which is supposed to which was believed to cause the uh, hypertension and the skin manifestation sir that will cause hypertension and skin manage, uh, skin manifestation how how will fibrin exuding or moving outside the capillaries or the venous uh, the thing will cause uh, hypertension and venous vessels it's a cuff look fibrin is forming a cuff so so exchange of of nutrients or oxygen is exchange is of bad. nutrients is the uh, is impaired nutrient. isn't it yes, that is what yes sir. and what's the wbc uh, um, uh, what is that what to theory white blood cells are trapped by the endothelium and the, what happens and uh, they cause inflammatory mediator so it is inflammatory okay because of inflammation localized inflammation the uh, yes, the cells become the endothelium becomes leaky okay next slide please why do you take history of prolonged immobilization Sir, to rule out any history of possibility of a deep venous thrombosis. Okay. What are the what is Virchow's Virchow's triad? So Virchow said endothelial injury uh, increased uh, viscosity and stasis. And which of these is the most important? Stasis, sir. Very good. And bursting pain. What do you mean by bursting pain? so bursting pain in cases of the uh, patient if they have deep venous thrombosis they have a bursting type of pain while walking <clears throat> why does that happen uh because the blood is not able to flow from superficial to deep veins so in that case the uh, superficial veins become increasingly dilated so that will cause the pain oh no in in, in because of deep vein thrombosis the blood will have to will cannot move from the uh, from uh, from the deep vein towards the ivc right yes sir so they they take a detour they try to move ah. through the superficial veins through the superficial veins yes what systemic symptoms did you look for ask for is it systemic the symptoms and may have a fever tachycardia these things if she had uh, any history of dvt which she has not noticed so that's acute dvt Yes, sir. You think this is acute DVT now? No, sir. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Next slide, please. Family history. Okay. Uh, right so so should we move to examination sir so what's the provisional diagnosis by by your history so it's bilateral lower limb varicose veins sir okay 
Okay. Can you make out by history which system is involved? Yes, sir. With uh, with the history, I can make out that uh, the dilated veins are seen uh, by the patient, and uh, there is no any history suggestive of any arterial disorder in the lower limb, which I have ruled out with the history. Did you and ask for back weakened. pain or anything? Did you ask for back pain? Any weakness uh, of the limbs in your history? Back pain, I have not asked, sir. Okay. Why, why should you ask for back pain or weakness of the limbs or lower limbs? To rule out neurogenic claudication, sir. Right. So, look, whenever you have a case of any peripheral vascular disease, you must rule out okay, sir. arterial, you must rule out neurogenic. Neurogenic. You must, yeah. because it's important. How will you dif how will you differentiate between the pains of uh, of neurogenic origin and arterial and venous? Sir, neurogenic claudication there is no claudication distance it starts from the beginning itself right whereas arterial and venous they have some claudication distance sir. okay right so you must rule that out okay yes sir so should we move to the examination anyone who would like to have an ask any questions sir? hello okay so then let's go to the examination yeah Sundar, move to the examination please Hello. Hello. Yes, last connection or what? Sunday? Hello. Sorry, sir. There was some connectivity problem. Okay. 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 You are fine now. Your connection is okay. Yes, sir. Yes. yes okay. Sir. Good luck. Sir, can you see my slide, yeah. sir? Yeah, we are able to see. Go to the slide which you left, ma, at the end when you are presenting. Yes, sir. I'll I'll start with the examination, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. Channel yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. Going on to general examination, after informed consent, patient was examined under adequate light and exposure, patient cooperative, BMI uh, 30 kg per meter square, uh, no pallor, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, bilateral pedal edema present, uh, vitals, pulse rate 86 beats per minute, 120 by 80 meter mercury in right arm in supine position, and uh, a patient was afibrile. So, coming to inspection of both lower limbs, uh, attitude of both lower limbs normal, no deformity, uh, gait is normal, no redness over the lower legs on both sides. Uh, there is pitting pedal edema present around the ankle. Uh, eczema is also present in both legs. There is no active ulceration, uh, no loss of hair, brittle nails, dry skin or loss of subcutaneous fat. So, coming to examination of the varicosities, on inspection, uh, there are dilated, elongated, tortuous veins seen along the anterior and medial aspect of leg and thigh. Uh, extend it is from dorsum of the foot up to the upper one third of the thigh. And on elevation of limb, dilated veins disappear. There is hyperpigmentation noted in gaiter area and foot. And on the left side, there is also a healed scratch mark seen above the lateral malleolus. And uh, cough impulse is not seen on both sides. So this is the patient, uh, this is the picture and this is the varicosity uh, involving the thigh and that is the heel scratch mark above the lateral majoris. Coming to palpation, uh, there is no rise in temperature and there is no tenderness or thickening of veins in both lower limbs. Brody Tenderlenberg test 1 is positive in right and left side, uh, which is suggestive of saphenofemoral junction incompetence. Brody Tenderlenberg test 2 is positive in both lower limbs, which is suggestive of communicating veins incompetence. And on multiple tourniquet tests, if there was uh, incompetent above knee, below knee, and lower leg operators on both sides. So, modified Perthes test is negative on both sides, and that has ruled out uh, deep venous thrombosis. On Figgins test, uh, 
the pits were felt at the level of blowouts below the knee at about uh, 5 10 and 15 cm from the medial malleolus uh, both on right and left side and morrissey's cough impulse test uh, impulse not felt at uh, subcutaneous junction and all the peripheral pulses of lower limb were palpated normal were present normally uh, on percussion uh, swatch test negative in both lower limbs and on auscultation there was no gooey uh, or murmur along the dilated veins in both lower limbs systemic examination was within normal limits on abdomen examination uh, there was uh, no organomegaly or palpable mass or free fluid in the abdomen summary of examination Uh, Trendelenburg test one positive, suggestive of uh, sacro femoral junction incompetence, and test two suggestive of incompetent incompetent communicating veins, and multiple tourniquet tests suggestive of incompetent above, below knee, and lower leg perforators with signs of chronic venous insufficiency without signs of DVT and other complications. Uh, my diagnosis: uh, bilateral lower limb primary varicose veins involving the great saphenous system. due to sacro femoral junction incompetence and incompetent above and below knee and lower leg perforators according to cef classification it is c4a ep a gsp ab and pr dr sundar yes sir i am done sir. do you know the meaning of uh, communicating vein <laughs> sir uh, communicating vein is uh, Vein which coming uh, joins two vein. Yes, yeah. Is it superficial to superficial vein or deep to deep vein? Deep to deep. Yes. So in the broad element test top part two, the test yes. is communicating vein. It is not for yes, communicating vein. It is for perforating vein. Okay. Okay, sir. It is not for communicating. I also had a doubt actually because. Uh, in yes, thus it is given as communicating veins. So. Should we mention it as communicating veins or perforating veins, sir? For Trendelenburg mm -hmm. test, perforating vein. Eh? Communicating vein is wrong. Sundar, why do you want to know the competence of communicating veins? Is it going to make any difference in your in your management? In the management, doesn't make difference, sir. So it doesn't matter. So yes, communicating veins have got no value here. Okay. 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 So both the limbs have the same CEAP classification. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So um, let's let's go back to your examination slide, regional examination. So this one or next one, sir? No, regional. Yeah, inspection. Inspection of your. so on elevation of limb dilated veins disappear what is this what is this called does it disappear or what happens okay what is guttering of veins what is guttering of veins so when the limb is elevated the blood flows back towards the heart sir so the dilatation comes down sir so Will you see guttering of veins in varicose veins or in uh, in arterial diseases? In arterial disease, sir. Why? Why will you see it in arterial disease and not in uh, venous disease? I am not sure, sir. Because in arterial disease, the the flow to the blood to the to the limb is decreased already. Decreased. So yes. the venous veins are already collapsed. When you when you raise it, they they become cutted. Okay, sir. Doctor Sundar, on inspection, yes, you can directly commit yourself as as uh, the varicose veins are there affecting long saphenous vein or short saphenous vein like that. Isn't it? Instead of telling it as on the rear and medial axis of the leg and thigh, you can commit. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Varicose veins affecting long saphenous vein. Yeah, straight away. Dorsal yes, okay. yeah. lower one third of the thigh like that. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. So, where did you? Okay, next slide. Please. Where did you test? Where is the saphenous opening present? Sir, so, saphenous opening is around three point five to four centimeter below and lateral to the pubic tubercle, sir. 
Okay. And it's a defect in what? It is a defect in the this one, uh, cribriform fascia, sir. Is it the cribriform fascia? What is the cribriform fascia? What is the cribriform fascia? Do you have an idea? What is the cribriform fascia? Uh, defect in the... So, uh, look, cribriform fascia is nothing but a fibro fatty tissue which uh, joins the calciform margin of the saphenous opening. Saphenous opening. So, it's yes, medial sir. margin, right? Yes, sir. It and is a defect in the fascia lata. Fascia lata, sir. Sorry. Lead fascia, fascia lata. PG, PG. So, what are the structures which are leaving, uh, which are entering the uh, saphenous opening? Uh, uh, the great vein along with this uh, tributary, sir. Okay, and anything else? And uh, drains into the common femoral vein. No, no, anything else? Anything else which is passing through the saphenous opening? You have the lymphatic vessels from the superficial inguinal lymph nodes to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. Deep and, yes. Okay. Okay. So now, what are the veins which are opening at the what uh, uh, at the saphenous opening? So the what are the tributaries of the uh, superficial inferior epigastric, uh, superficial external pudendal, and superficial circumflex iliac vein. Sir. Just, just three, and uh, deep external pudendal also opens sir, medially. Deep external pudendal. Look, here, three you've named: inferior epigastric, circumflex yes. iliac, and uh, uh, external pudendal. Anterior accessory saphenous vein, sir. It is superficial anterior lateral and superficial posterior medial. Posterior medial. And you have the external pudendal also. Yes. So this, what is the vein of Gya company? So it is the cranial extension of the short saphenous vein, sir. This superficial posterior medial which so the vein to the uh, short saphenous is called the vein of Gya company. Yes. Okay. So you say that uh, no thickness, tenderness or thickening of veins. Where, which which veins are you feeling for tenderness or thickening? Sir, there may be some associated uh, superficial thromboplegitis, sir, in which the veins become thickened. You can't really palpate these. Uh, they are tor tortuous. You can do nothing called thickening there. Right? Okay. Okay, Brody's Tendenberg test positive. How do you test for that? Sir, first we have to make the patient uh, supine and uh, elevate his limb and milk out the veins and uh, tie a tourniquet or put a pressure with thumb below the saphenous opening and ask the patient to stand and release the pressure. If the veins start filling from up, upwards, down, then it uh, denotes SFJ incompetence. Sir. From? This is you, test one. You've occluded the saphenofemoral. Yes. Sir. Right? And the yes. veins uh, start filling from? Above down. Good. Above down, sir. So you already included it. The way how, how will it, how will the veins from below downwards? Right. Isn't it? Below downwards. Below upwards. Below. Okay. If you have to do three tests in varicose veins, which three tests are the most important? Others are just not required. Sir, so Trendelenburg test one, modified Perthes test. Right. First, you have to look whether there's DVT or not. Yes, sir. Modified Perthes is the most important. Perthes. Sir. Right. Perthes. And then, either Trendenburg 1 and 2. Trendelenburg. All these others, others, Morris's, all that, Pagans and all that, short, yes, so they're, they're useless. They don't, they're just yes. historical. Okay, yes. Let's go to the next slide, please. Palpation 
ओके डिड यू टेस्ट फॉर द सेफ्टो पोपिटल जंक्शन Is the Sefton Popliteal involved? Sefton Popliteal was not involved, sir. There was no dilated varicosities in that area, sir. In the lateral aspect of the lip. Okay. Next, next slide, please. Auscultation. Okay. Will you find auscultation? Uh, okay. Next slide, please. Not, not really. Hmm. In venous blood flow, we yeah. don't hear bruit. Yeah, bruit. Ah, bruit for arterial flow. Arterial flow. Arterial. Yes. Hmm. Right. Venous hum. We call it venous hum. It's called venous hum, not bruit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Next slide, please. You've not palpated. Have you palpated? Done a digital rectal examination? Have you Have you tested this? Have you examined the spine? Uh, no, sir. Have you looked for for any varicoses? Have you examined the? I'm sorry, she's a female lady. I'm sorry. Okay, and the the back you not examined spine. Is it important, sir? Is it important to examine the spine? Yes, sir. To rule out neurogenic cause. You must. I think it's it's always a good idea, isn't it? Yes. And digital rectal also should be done to rule out other varicosities. Right, because you can't you you can't do a PV. So at least you can do a PR. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. So please, sir. Okay, now how will you proceed then? Sir, so I'll do investigation to confirm the diagnosis. I'll do a Doppler study of both the lower limbs. Okay. I'll. In duplex study, what I will. Mean, what do you mean by duplex study? So it is a combination of both uh, B mode ultrasound and uh, color wave pulse wave Doppler, sir. Okay, why do you want a B mode here? So B mode to visualize the vein and to assess the diameter of the vein, sir. Which diameter of which vein? Diameter of the great saphenous vein. It's usually seen in the. Why do you want to know the, the diameter? Of... Why do you want to know the diameter of the great saphenous? So. Because that will decide the management strategy we are going to use. Sir. Okay. Suppose. Okay. If how much? If it is larger than one point five or more than two centimeter, then endovenous treatments are contraindicated. Sir. Okay. So the vein diameter does it does it vary with with the amount of blood? Uh, I have not come across diameters of uh, of uh, venous and endoluminal. This thing for for venous. What endoluminal luminal treatment will you do for venous varicose veins? So endovenous laser ablation or radio frequency ablation, sir. Endo. Okay. Okay. So does the vein uh, diameter of the vein vary or does not vary? Sir, it it can vary, sir, because of. Uh, That may be a vein wall abnormality. Suppose, the, suppose the, the vein is more than a centimeter di dilated. You can't do endovenous procedure, can you, or can't you? How do you do an endovenous sir, procedure? We can do, sir. We can do manual compression of the vein and do, sir. Manual, but you can inject very around the the vessels, increase the pressure, and then do it. Yes. Sir. Look, the vein's diameter don't really matter. It it can't go to five centimeters. Okay. Right? So why do you want to? Why do you want this? But you still do a B mode. Why do you want to do a B mode? To visualize the thrombus in the deep vein. Visualize the DVT, sir. Yes. First thing we should rule out a DVT. Sir, so please. Okay, let's go to. So, have you got? You've done a ultrasound Doppler. Now, what do you look for in ultrasound Doppler? So, Doppler, we will uh, look for the incompetence in the saphenocameral junction. 
as well as rule out incompetence of the serpino popliteal junction uh, we have to demonstrate the reflux flow sir how do, how is that done how is that done so it can be done by a calf squeeze the or calf muscle or or valsalva maneuver okay right and of course you will rule out or manual compression sir okay so you've done this now right yes sir now uh, what are the indications for surgery in this patient what sir, will you tell her so there are uh, signs of chronic chronic venous insufficiency mm-hmm. patient is developing eczema and uh, there is also an episode of bleeding from the vein from the scratch mark and it has pd is she and, having uh, the tortuous veins are also veins are also very tortuous so it's better to go for a surgical treatment sir okay so which limb will you will you operate both the limbs together so both the limbs to uh, the first i'll operate the limb which causes more discomfort to us but your classification is the same in both the limbs both are same sir so how will you decide now so i'll go with the left side first right the why why do you want to go with the left first of the left okay why is which which limb lower limb is varicose veins more common right or left and why not sure is it left sir yeah it, it is left left what is why why is it left what is may turner syndrome may turner it? syndrome it is a uh, where the right common iliac artery compresses uh, when it crosses the left common iliac vein sir left common iliac vein is compressed by the right common iliac artery right common iliac uh-huh. why is that uh-huh. why does that happen no idea of course because the left common iliac vein wants to reach the ivc which is on the right IVC. side yes sir that's across the common iliac artery right so that's is all common on the left side okay so can you tell me some anatomy now okay can you tell me the the describe the venous system of the lower limb how does it start so the, the deep, deep system and the superficial system separately the deep system there are three crural veins uh, which are venae comitans which accompany the arteries so that is a common peroneal anterior tibial and posterior tibial and right. these three they travel upwards they converge to form the popliteal vein which okay. goes upwards as a femoral vein sir right okay very good now about the superficial uh, dorsal venous arch converges to form the great serpentinous vein medially mm-hmm. and it goes medially and posteriorly it coils around the popliteal coils around in the uh, around the knee in the popliteal fossa mm-hmm. and it moves anteriorly into the common femoral vein sir and inserts into the common femoral vein Okay, so what is the posterior arch vein of Leonardo? Sir, posterior arch vein is uh, communicating vein, sir. What what communicating vein? What does it communicate? From the GSV to the ankle vein, medial. So it is basically a, a tributary of of the great saphenous. Tributary of GSV, which, sir. Through which the which, perforators. right which will the ankle perforators ankle perforators arise from the posterior arch right so how does the blood reach the from the superficial to the deep when you have the perforators do the perforators open directly so there are two types sir there are direct perforators and indirect perforators so what are they direct perforators they directly pierce the deep fascia and go into the deep vein whereas indirect perforators they go to the muscle they form some sinusoids and then they travel to the deep vein sir right 
Uh, now, uh, are there any perforators for the which uh, which drain into the posterior tibial and the anterior tibial? Paratibial Most of them. Huh? Paratibial perforators are there. Right, paratibial and and below knee void perforators. Okay, voids voids is basically uh, is from the uh, from the great softness directly into the yes sir into posterior tibia. Okay, there are certain certain called Sherman's and all that. It's not very important. Okay, yes. so now before she go, you go in for surgery. She's come to your OPD. What management will you do before you go in for surgery? She's having pain. She's not Asana. getting. What will you do? So first, I'll uh, give patient education. I'll advise her limb elevation. And uh, this is limb elevation. One when? Sir, so at, at least she can't be uh, having. Uh, you can't advise her limb elevation all through the so, day. While <laughs> while sleeping, she has to keep uh, two pillows right. below her leg. Okay. And keep her limb elevated. Oh, how high? How high would you want to elevate the limb? Above the level of heart, sir. Like it right. is told at the level of the nose. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. What else? And I'll advise compression stockings, sir. What kind of stockings? It's a graded compression stocking, sir. Okay. So uh, below knee, above knee? <clears throat> so it is from the Till the groin, sir. Till the upper, upper thighs. Are there? Why do you want to give a upper till the groin? So because she has a junctional incompetence, also, sir. So you think the the one which will go right up to the groin will will stay up there and press on to the saphenofemoral? So actually, no, sir. Uh, it will prevent the reflex flow, sir. Actually. Okay, so you usually give a baloney. Above these, very cumbersome, they're ineffective, and no one uses it. No one uses Okay, sir. She's got problems with the lower limbs, so you give her lower limbs. Now, okay. you said what, what what grade of stockings will you give? Sir, it is actually a graded pressure, sir. Maximum pressure should be in the ankle, should be around uh, 30 millimeter of mercury, and it should gradually, the pressure should gradually decrease as it moves upwards, sir. So suppose she was having an arterial disease, would you still give her that? No, sir. First, we actually we should first check the ABPI, sir. If the ABPI is normal, we can uh, give this. If the ABPI is uh, normal, ABPI should be 0.9 to 1.1. If it is below 0.8, then we will have to uh, increase the pressure, sir. Look, class two uh, compression stockings have they're called graded, but the maximum okay. pressure they cause they give is between. 25 to, 45 40, to 40, sir. 25 to 35 millimeters of mercury. Okay, sir. Okay. And what about her itching and eczema and all that kind of... What is this eczema called? Sir? sir? What is this eczema, this itching and eczema called? In varicose veins? Sir, they are signs of chronic venous insufficiency, sir. Right. They're called varicose eczema. So what do you do for them? Varicose. I will uh, give antihistamines and emollients sir, to right. keep the skin. Of course, she had also. Okay, sir. So, which is called a varicose also. How yes, will sir. you differentiate this from a venous also and an arterial also and a neurogenic also? Varicose, varicose, varicose is only because of varicose veins, sir. It is. So how uh, it is usually develops uh, from the point where the vein bursts out or it bleeds out because of trauma. Okay. But how will you know the water? What else? Any other difference? So, with compression stocking, uh, the compression bandage, the, usually the venous ulcer stops and it starts healing. But an arterial, uh, but a uh, varicose also will not? Sorry, varicose ulcer, I'm telling you. So, venous ulcer will not? Venous. Okay. Venous. What, where are the varicose veins? They are above the? 
deep fascia. Above the deep fascia, sir. The ulcer will also be superficial. They'll be above the deep fascia. Superficial. Arterial ulcers are deeper. Arterial ulcers are, are right at the towards the end peripheral. Venous ulcers are deeper to the to the deep fascia. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else would like to take over? Sundar. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Now, what does C4A indicates? C4 is hyperpigmentation or eczema, sir. Then the, if there is C4A, there must be C4B and C. What about C4B? Sir, C4B, lipodermatosclerosis is not present sir, in this patient. Mm. Then what is C4C? And C4C is corona flebectatica, sir. That is, previously it was called as malleolar flare, the reticular veins which are spread out in the ankle area. And what, what about C5 and 6? C5 is a healed venous ulcer, sir, and C6 is a active venous ulcer. Sir. And what is A, G, S, V and A, B? Sir, this is according, uh, this C classification I have mentioned is the 2020 modification, sir. Yeah. Anatomically, they have uh, uh, given abbreviations for the veins involved. For great surfinous system, it is GSV. And for short surfinous system, we should mention it as SSV. And A denotes above knee and B denotes below knee, right? So, both the compartments are involved. So, both above and below knee is involved. Hence, you are putting A and B. Am I right? Yes, actually. I am not sure whether this is the right thing, sir. I have just read this is the modification. Mm. I actually wanted to ask this mm. one. Is this right or it is written in a different way? Sir? The last one, PR. Sir, PR is pathology, sir. R is for reflex, O is for obstruction. Mm. So, there is a reflex in this case. Yes, sir. What is the single most test, clinical test, in a case of varicose vein? Herpes test, sir. Why? Because if it is done to rule out DVT, if uh, deep venous thrombosis is present, then any active intervention is contraindicated, sir. What is... Pertis and what is modified pertis? How, how can you demonstrate a pertis and how can you demonstrate a modified pertis? So in classical pertis, uh, mm -hmm. there is a uh, the compression bandage which is uh, applied from the ankle till the groin completely and mm -hmm. with the bandage on, the patient is asked to walk. Yes. At that time, the patient develops a bursting pain. Yes. But in modified pertis, we just tie a to tourniquet mm -hmm. at the femoral junction mm -hmm. and we ask the patient to walk. When the mm -hmm. patient walks, we can, if the uh, deep venous compartment is patent, we can see that the dilated veins mm -hmm. disappear, the uh, dilatation disappears. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in, uh, if DVT is present, they mm -hmm. become more dilated and they cause a bursting pain. Okay. Well, I'm good. Management. Sundar, uh, so just before that, that sir, sir, Sundar, just before that, yes. when you tie this tunic, what do you make sure of? <laughs> what do you have to keep in mind before tie, when you tie this tunic? When you're doing the Perthes test? Yes, sir. How tight should your tunic be? It should, it should not occlude the vein, sir. Which vein? It should not occlude the deep vein, sir. Right. So, how do you know it's not included the deep end? You will be able to pass your finger. Okay, one finger is, should be able to pass. Yes. Okay. Now, there's a term called atrophy blanche. Have you heard of it? Yes, sir. That is uh, atrophic white areas on the skin. So what is what uh, what what does that indicate? It is a sign of advanced venous disease, sir. Right. That the skin is going to break down at that point. Yes. Right. Like Professor Karna Karna asked you now. 
just talk about the management in this patient i will go with the surgical management sir i will do flush ligation of the uh, great saphenous vein along with ligation of the tributaries and uh, stripping of vein till the knee sir flush ligation of the great saphenous vein sir okay and ligation of the tributaries individual ligation of the tributaries and the stripping of the vein sir stripping of the vein still what pain stripping of what pain stripping what of pain? the gs with the truncal vein sir so up to up to which area you you strip the vein sir till the knee sir till the knee level sir till the not knee go till the leg sir hmm. what is crossectomy have you heard of this term crossectomy yes sir crossectomy is uh, individual excision of the communicating where the branching yeah. varicosities sir no the ligation of your of the saphenofemoral is also called crossectomy because okay. it is like a cross yes the yes. the, the shepherds they carry a, a staff which is crooked yes, like that yes sir that's right okay. okay any other any other uh, have you heard of sclerotherapy yes sir sclerotherapy i have heard okay how do you, what is that sir so sclerotherapy can be two forms it can be a direct injection of the sclerosant into the dilated vein segment or there is a ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy in which a foam is formed by mixing one part of the sclerosant with four pulses of air Using okay. two syringes by Tessari Technique. Sir. Why do you have to make this foam? Sir, why can't foam, you? Uh, we can use lesser volume of sclerosant, and it also displaces the blood away and uh, binds better with the endothelium and causes the endothelial injury. Okay, binds sticks, the intima basically. Sir. Sticks to the intima. Very good. Yes. Sir. So, how do you do it? Sir, we have to make the patient stand. once the veins are dilated we have to uh, uh, assess the points where we are going to inject with ultrasound guidance and we have to uh, insert the needle or uh, iv cannula at those points and then make the patient lie down once the veins are milled up then we inject the sclerosant in all the spots and do what inject the sclerosant into what into the veins sir and then you do something after that and then you have to apply the compression bandage from below up right so what's the corona cancer what is cockett and dots procedure sir cockett and dots procedure sir cockett is uh, an extra facial ligation of the perforator sir it was done before extra extra facial ligation of the perforator sir you mean uh, you are ligating superficial to the, the deep facial like it, sir. you mean you are ligating the perforator superficial yes, to the deep facial or deep to the deep facial that is my question sir now the practice is subfacial ligation sir that is what Previous is called as that is what is called as cockett and dots procedure See subfacial ligation okay. is called as cockett and dots procedure. Okay, sir. Mm. Uh, any other faculty? Uh, like to ask, give your comments, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Sundar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we have very nicely answered all the questions. Just the last few questions. Uh, now there is a trend of only ligation of the saphenofemoral junction, right? More and more sir? surgeons are adopting so. Ligation of the saphenofemoral junction instead of stripping, simply yes, ligation, right? So, okay. what are the disadvantages of stripping along with ligation, which is a standard procedure? And what is the disadvantage? Of, yeah, of, of the complications the, you can see. Yeah, complications, the complications can lead to uh, associated nerve injury or yes. uh, increased bleeding also, and. can cause other vessel injury nearby can cause infection or it can cause uh, yeah acchymosis nerve injury you said it can yes. cause deep vein thrombosis also deep vein thrombosis also. right then what is the disadvantage of 
simply ligating the vessel and doing the recurrence rate is high sir simple ligation yeah, recurrence rate is high and the quality of life sometimes is not as good as it, it is yes sir yeah okay. sundar yes sir have you heard about uh, equina virus deformity yes sir mm. it is just mm. Equina virus deformity it is seen in patients with chronic varicose vein, especially with ulcer. Because of the pain, the patient tends to walk on the toes. So that will cause some relief of the pain. And in, if this happens on a long term, it causes shortening of the Achilles tendon, which causes the equinus deformity. It is actually like a horse foot, sir. That's why it is called as equinus deformity. They don't walk on the heels, they walk on the toes. Yes. Any other complications associated with uh, varicose veins which you have not mentioned? So, lipodermatosclerosis. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be bleeding from the varicose veins. Mm -hmm. There can be ulceration in the vein from the veins. Mm -hmm. Then, rarely, it, varicose vein can lead to DVT. Thrombophlebitis. Thrombo superficial thrombophlebitis also happens. Calcification of the vein also sometimes. Calcification happens. and uh, periostitis also happens. Yes. If the patient is affordable and want an ultra modern treatment. So there are endovenous procedures, sir. Mm. Thermal ablation and non thermal procedures. Mm. Thermal, there are two, uh, one is laser ablation and uh, radio frequency ablation. Mm. And uh, recent advances, there is a uh, synoculate glue therapy also, endovenous injection of the synoculate glue. Uh, and uh, there is also a combined mechanical chemical ablation procedure. Sir. Have you ever come across any of these new treatments? Sir, I have personally not seen that. You have not seen? Yes, sir. That's all from my side. Anybody want to take? I think uh, we are on time. We are uh, 9 o'clock and above, sir. Uh, Dr. Sundar, do you have any questions or doubts to ask? Sir, uh, the latest classification, the thing which I have written is right or wrong, sir. Like, Can I write it as GSV, AB or... If SSV is also present, then how should I mention it? Should I mention both or the dominant one only should I mention? Uh, Heyman sir and Karnakaran sir. Sahai sir, what is your take sir? Do we need to mention both? What is your take, Karnakaran, sir? Sir, it seems new to me. I could not comment on this. <laughs> Let's see how the examiners so, react. You leave it to us, uh, Dr. Sundar. Uh, we will check with the vascular experts and get back yes, to you in yes. person. You have my number. You reach out to me. Okay, okay sir. Sure, sir. Thank you very much, Sundar. And uh, Professor Kalita, thank you very much for permitting thank me. You, sir. I yeah, would request yeah. you to... Present it very well. Present it very well. Uh, of course. Good answer sir. almost all the questions. Yeah. And brilliant presentation. And brilliant examination. Of the yes, sir. He, he understood almost the concepts of the disease. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So now we move on to the next presentation. Uh, Karthikeyan. Uh, Kalita, sir, you can also ask questions. Karthik Ayan? Yes, I'm here, sir. Please switch on your video. Yes. Share your presentation, Karthik. You are in a safe place, ma. Less noisy. Yes, sir. I'm in the room, sir. I'm not sure which mic is giving all this. Manjunath, sir, and Kalita, sir, Heyman, sir, please take over, sir. 
first slide ma go to the first slide yes sir good luck to you please introduce your unit uh, chief your hod and then start your presentation yes sir uh, good evening to one and all gathered here uh, this is dr karth again final year uh, ms general surgery resident from coimbatore medical college my hod and unit chief is dr lakshmi narayan ma'am and uh, my guide was dr shrinivasan sir and i would like to present a case of a soft tissue swelling in the right axillary region today uh, a 6 year old gentleman from tirupur who is a retired teacher by occupation came with swelling in the right axillary region for the past 6 months and uh, the patient was apparently normal 6 months back following which he noticed a small swelling in the right axillary region so since it is an onset initially small in size it gradually increased to 10 times its initial size there is no history of pain or trauma there is no history of fever or swelling in any other parts of the body or loss of appetite or significant loss of weight no history suggests of metastasis such as uh, abdominal distension or jaundice or uh, cough or hemoptysis no history of headache or vomiting or visual disturbances patient does not have any comorbidities such as diabetes or hypertension he is not on any regular medications he has a past history of uh, trauma to the right shoulder following which he has restricted movement of the right shoulder joint uh, he has no history of previous surgeries and no history of uh, childhood irradiation to the local parts any other parts of the body and uh, patient is a non smoker and uh, non alcoholic he has normal appetite and uh, normal diet habits and there is no history of any drug abuse he has normal sleep habits there is no family history of similar illness or malignancies so summarize my history so 6 year old gentleman who is present uh, with complaints of swelling in the right axilla for the past 6 months with uh, no comorbidities or uh, previous surgical history Uh, should i proceed sir faculty karnakaran sir heman sir sahai sir kalita sir okay um, could you go back to your first slide please yes sir pass i'm sorry i missed your history no problem sir no problem Okay. Uh, right. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, just a insidious swelling with no other significant, no pain, nothing else, isn't it? Yes, sir. Only the swelling, which was a painless swelling, sir. All right. And nothing else is there. Yes, sir. No, nothing else significant or pointing towards. Okay. So, what do you think? What do you think you're dealing with? Is how uh, old is he? Sixty is years, mate. Sixty-year male with a swelling in the right axilla, with no yes, other sir. complaints. Yes, sir. Okay. Has he undergone any surgery for this before? No, sir. He has not, sir. He only has no investigation. Trauma. Nothing. No, no core biopsy. Nothing. No, sir. For the past six months, it's been slowly growing, and uh, he just came to the OPD with complaints of the lumps, sir, the swelling. There's no other uh, complaints, sir. He didn't take any treatment for this uh, uh, at no, all, sir. Course. it has not been causing any uh, discomfort for him so he's just left it there sir and since it's attained like uh, cross size he came to the opd sir okay okay so what do you think could this could be uh, since it's a slow growing tumor uh, it could be a uh, secondary in the right axilla with unknown primary or uh, uh, benign swelling uh, such as a lipoma or a uh, low grade uh, sarcoma sir okay Let's go to the examination room. Yes, sir. General examination. After obtaining consent from the patient, he was examined in a well-lit room with adequate exposure, and the patient was comfortable and cooperative. He is a moderately built uh, man and well nourished. His uh, BMI is twenty point seven. Ecog score is one. You know, it's no pallor, ectus, clubbing, cyanosis, fatal edema, or uh, generalized lymphadenopathy. Pulse rate was eighty per minute and uh, regular in rhythm, normal volume. Blood pressure is one twenty plus seventy, and on uh, local examination, a globular swelling of uh, size approximately twelve cross ten centimeters is present in the right axillary region and uh, lateral aspect of the right side of chest, extending ten centimeters inferior to the lateral end of clavicle to the level of the right nipple, and uh, from the level of the mid clavicular line to the axilla, displacing the right arm laterally. Surface appears smooth and uh, well defined margins. Skin over the swelling appears normal, sir. This is the inspection finding of the patient. And, uh, 
abducting arm as well and on palpation there was no localized rise of temperature and no tenderness all the inflammatory findings are confirmed the swelling was uh, firm in consistency and uh, freely mobile and the patient this uh, when the arm is at rest and upper limit of the swelling was palpable swelling in this was in the subcutaneous plane but adherent to the muscle which was tested by placing the arm in the hip and uh, pressing against resistance and uh, the swelling becomes fixed in the arm is being pressed against the hip so the swelling appears to be adherent to the muscle there is no palpable lymphadenopathy in the regional uh, lymph nodes and the range of movement is restricted at the right uh, shoulder joint is not able to abduct past 90 degrees there is no sensory or motor deficits in the right upper limb and uh, distal pulses are palpable up to the radial and ulnar arteries the opposite side chest axilla and uh, abdomen were all normal systemic examination it was uneventful and uh, abdomen there was no mass or no organomegaly and central nervous system there was no uh, clinically normal no supraglottic lymphadenopathy was palpable to summarize my uh, examination finding a 6 year old gentleman came with complaints of swelling in the right axilla no associated symptoms with uh, no significant past history and a non tender well de well defined firm swelling in the right axilla measuring 12 cross 10 cm in the subcutaneous plane adherent to the muscle with no associated neurovascular deficit and no regional lymphadenopathy okay uh, kartikin uh, let's go yes, back to your to your regional examination yes sir thanks no before that okay okay are the two limbs equal in di in 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 structure yes sir comparing against the opposite side the both upper limbs are normal same equal in size symmetrical okay. have you written that somewhere i have i written about the axilla and the chest sir but no, i haven't mentioned we that. want to know whether the two limbs are similar they no difference yes, in sir, the two limbs okay yes right, sir, that yes. is important Definitely. also the range of movement of the of the uh, shoulder joint is it the same no sir uh, abduction is restricted at the right shoulder joint sir right is not that able is... to abduct past 90 degrees which is shown in the picture sir so why would that be what what uh, abducts uh, abducts the shoulder uh, the arm uh, uh, above 90 degrees the delta in muscles sir. and right, uh, so... the muscle first yes sir. right okay Uh, you said it's fixed to the next slide, please. Yes. What about the right? What right? What about the pulsations? The pulsations in both the uh, uh, radial pulsations in both the uh, upper limbs are normal. Yes, sir. Uh, both the radial arteries and ulnar arteries were uh, normal in volume and the rhythm is normal, sir. Palpable and normal, sir. Comparing against the opposite side. Right. This has to come out very clearly. I was, I'm, I'm not seeing it in your, in your. Okay. Okay. It should be right. Okay. Now you said it's fixed to the pectoral. Which pectoral? Major or minor? Pectoral is muscle. Which pectoral? I, I did not uh, clearly uh, differentiate, sir. He was able. He was uh, immobile. So which? Right. Sir. So probably the pectoral is major, sir. Right. Pectoral is major. How do you how do you how do you taught the pectoral is major? How do you know it's fixed to the pectoral is major? making the patient uh, press against the hip sir both press sides against? Putting, putting the hand against the hip sir and making him to press against the hips right and checking the axillary fold we make making sure the muscle is stout sir okay so the uh, the movement became restricted both both upward uh, upward downward and lateral both movements became uh, sir upward and downward it was mobile so lateral mobility was restricted sir Okay, so perpendicular to the muscle. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Next. Right. Okay. Next. is the uh, uh, is it only in the front of the chest or is the is the is there any involvement in the uh, over the scapular region also or behind no sir not on the back sir it is well uh, uh, within the axillary right. region okay. that's okay. not possible posterior axillary folds so is it attached to the latissimus dorsi also 
No, sir. It was uh, upper border and posterior border was able to be calculated. Okay. Okay. So now, after examination, what do you think this is? Uh, um, I would like to come up with differential diagnosis, sir. Right. Uh, first, uh, differential could be uh, soft tissue swelling in the subcutaneous plane, which is uh, probably uh, sarcoma or any other neoplastic disease. And since it's on the lateral uh, and the axillary region, possibility of uh, lymph node swelling, a metastatic lymph node of unknown primary can be considered, sir. As well as uh, a breast lump in the towards the axillary plane should also be right. considered. Right. I, I would, I would, I would think of a. Of because you're saying subcutaneous region, I would think yes, of a malignancy of the of the male breast rather yes, than yes. soft tissue sarcoma. Secondary yes, to the lymph nodes is, is not so common. It doesn't look like this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Home from there, I will inform my one thing you do inform Jalal sir. Professor Karna, can please, sir. Sir, sir. Actually, <clears throat> if the same swelling present in a female, what could be your first differential diagnosis? My first differential would be a malignant swelling, the breast, malignant lump in the breast. What? Carcinoma breast would be my first differential diagnosis. See, see you. So somebody's just uh, Dr. Ajit Shukla. Sir, he has to be muted, sir. Sir, can I well, sir? Dr. Ajit Shukla has to be muted, sir. Okay, Karthike M. Yes, sir. See, if a similar swelling is present in a female. Yes, sir. Female patient. Yes, sir. What, what could be your diagnosis? Uh, carcinoma breast would be my first diagnosis. First differential see, diagnosis. You, you could not find any, any lump in the breast. You don't have any clinical evidence of a carcinoma breast, but you have a swelling like this in the axilla. Uh, swelling, uh, second is uh, with uh, occult primary, sir. Second is in the axilla with occult primary or axillary tail or spine, sir. Uh, Castroma and the axillary tail can be possible, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Karthikin, what is the difference between occult primary and unknown primary? And uh, unknown primary will be uh, non visible even after uh, investigating the patient with uh, triple scopy and uh, radiological investigation, sir. But knuckle primary can be uh, found out on investigating the patient, sir. Knuckle primary, you can? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it, are you sure that knuckle primary can be found? Uh, yes, sir. On uh, further evaluating the patient, we are knuckle primary will be able to be found, sir. Okay, yeah, right. So, please. Uh, Karthik A.N. Yes, sir. Uh, in the in the previous hypothetical scenario, yes, sir. what is your investigation to evaluate a single most investigation to evaluate if it is present in a female and there is no palpable lump in the breast of the female? Yes, what is what is your single most important investigation to evaluate? Biopsy of the yeah, swelling, sir. Yes, the biopsy comes as adenocarcinoma. Uh, then we should uh, consider it as a metastasis from the breast, sir. Then we could uh, go ahead with a mammogram, sir. With yes. a postmenopause mammogram. Yeah, yeah. Ma mammogram. Uh, uh, can you go for any special mammogram? Uh, we can go for contrast mammogram, sir. Still, more, is, uh, still, more, still more precise. MR mammogram, magnetic MR. MR mammogram is one thing. The indication yes. for uh, one of the indication for MR mammogram is uh, in case of a woman with an axillary node, only a presence of axillary node with uh, biopsy positivity. We yes. have to go for MR mammogram yes. to rule out or confirm a malignancy in the breast. Yes, sir. 
So most yes. of the times, most of the times it is positive. It is yes. a case scenario when a patient have a similar swelling in the axilla in a woman without any palpable lump. We must do an MR mammogram to confirm our rule out. That is the single most important investigation in case of a woman. So uh, this is a male patient. So we can uh, even even in this patient we can do an MR mammogram. not only to find out any breast malignancy but also to assess uh the rep, uh, extent of the swelling and which plane yeah. the swelling yes origin, origin of extent origin. of the swelling whether there is a neurovascular involvement whether it is it is engulfing the artery vein and we can plan with the help of this uh, mr uh, mri whether we can remove this whether we can achieve r0 r0 resection or not yes sir no and yes, uh, yes sir there is a small scar over there could you explain yes, what what is that scar the patient was actually admitted before and then he had uh, done an coronal uh, biopsy in that region sir so mm. that is the scar of the biopsy sir. Why, why why do you why do you do coronal biopsy why don't you go for a fmc sir uh, in in case of a suspected uh, sarcoma it's ideal to go for a biopsy sir a biopsy gives tissue diagnosis of the patient sir it can uh, help in uh, grading system as well sir the yes. stage of the soft tissue tumor includes grading as well yes uh, a biopsy will be able to give a stage of the tumor sir see the single most important prognostic factor or single, single most important uh, factor in staging the disease is grading of the tumor yes yes sir okay, okay. let it be uh, this swelling is a uh, uh, soft tissue tumor and you are able to palpate a node in this case yes sir now uh, what could be your, the stage of this uh, it directly goes on to the stage 4 sir me uh regional lymphadenopathy or metastasis goes to stage 4 sir stage 4 can it be stage 4a or b uh stage 4a sir nodal yes. metastasis when you have a, a nodal metastasis you don't have to uh wait for grading and uh, uh, other things yes, you can sir. straight away go to stage 4a yes 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 sir say so, okay you have come to the diagnosis of you, you please repeat your differential diagnosis would you please uh soft tissue tumor uh, probably uh, soft tissue sarcoma mm. or uh, carcinoma of the breast or uh, second is uh, in the axillary with uh, unknown primary sir. second is with unknown primary uh, see what are all the investigations the patient has been subjected uh, you might be having the reports now yes sir i have sir. patient okay. uh, investigation would be to confirm a diagnosis so, so i went ahead with an ultrasound and uh, following which uh, was present in the subcutaneous plane and uh, we had to do an mri mm. mri of the chest mm. and then an uh, image guided biopsy sir mm. why you uh, need an image guided biopsy for this much big size uh, sir, uh, tumor so super subcutaneous tumor there could be areas of uh, necrosis yeah in yeah, so yeah. we have to take uh, biopsy from the solid and representative areas yes so that, we did an image carried biopsy sir okay so and uh, since the muscle, there was in, uh, infiltration adherence in the muscle mm. on examination we had mm. to do an mri mm. to find out uh, the plane and the mm. uh, organ of origin sir okay what next what are what other investigations you have done uh then we had, we did a ct chest sir uh, all the investigations above had suggested a sarcoma sir mm. so we did a ct chest with upper abdomen mm. as a metastatic workup sir yes to stay and uh, that came out to be uh, mm. only no regional nodes or uh, no chest or uh, liver metastasis sir so patient was uh, proceeded for uh, excision sir Right. Uh, 
Okay. So what's the difference between a carcinoma and a sarcoma? Man, man, order, buddy. Embryological, uh, and the epidermis, uh, the tissue size to tumor becomes a carcinoma, sir. And a mesodermal layer that uh, mesodermal tissue that gives size to tumor. Okay. It's termed as sarcoma. But Epithelial it's not. Epithelial and mesenchyma. What else? And uh, sarcoma grows by uh, compressed surrounding tissue. Sir. And uh, carcinoma has a propensity to infect and encroach into the surrounding tissues. Okay. So uh, sarcomas are usually surrounded by a pseudo capsule and compressive zones, compression reactive zone. Sir. Compressive zone. And, so they don't have uh, a capsule. You say not capsulated. Okay. What else? Yes. Sir. What else? Anything more than well, very very important? Carcinomas. Metastasis through lymph nodes, monogram and tissue. That we've discussed. Yes. Uh, there are no pre-malignant conditions. Yes. Sir. Right. Uh, sarcomas do not have a pre-malignant condition. Uh, and there is no in situ stage. Yes. Sir. Right? That is very important here. Yes. Sir. Okay. Like Sir said, how else will we proceed now? You've taken a a, a core biopsy. Yes. Sir. I've done my diagnosis and uh, it turns out so to be. Sarcoma. You have the report of the core biopsy with you. Uh, sir, I. Do not have the report of the core biopsy, sir. But uh, histopathological specimen report I do have, sir. Uh, the core biopsy report came out to be uh, soft tissue sarcoma, probably uh, a low grade sarcoma, sir. Okay. And patient and rent an MRI, sir. The report has shown. Sir, am I still busy? Okay. So what do you mean by low grade, sir? Uh, the grading system uh, we score based on mitosis and uh, uh, necro areas of uh, necrosis and uh, mitosis, sir, and differentiation based on the grade. Uh, if we have a two or three points, we call it a low grade, sir, and uh, four, five, six points we have it as high grade, sir, and more than six we have it as. Uh, in, uh, no, so what are the factors sir? considered for grading? What are the factors uh, considered for grading? Mitosis, uh, differentiation, and uh, necrosis. Sir. Three points we add. Sir. Okay. Pleomorphism? Yes, sir. Also, okay. Yes, sir. So, how much mitotic activity is considered for low grade? Uh, less than 10 uh, will be considered as low grade, sir. 10 to 19 less, will be. Less than added. 3, 3 to 20, more than 20. Yes. So, grade 1 and 2. That is yes, uh, are considered as low grade. Yes, sir. And, again. Yes, sir. Sir, please consider, continue, sir. Please. No, sir. I was just asking about staging. So please. The again. Yes, sir. If it is a rhabdomyosarcoma. Yes, sir. What could be the stage? Uh, it would be uh, stage. Uh, Two, uh, stage two, sir. Maybe, see, yes, sir. I see, rap, and, uh, see rap, my, Okay, yes, okay, okay. Tell me, tell me. Sir, uh, clinically, uh, T3, N0, M0, sir. And, uh, what is T1, what is T2, and what is T3? Uh, T1 is uh, less than 5 centimeters, sir. Mm. 5 to 10 centimeters is uh, T2, sir. Mm. Uh, uh, 10 to 15 centimeters is T3, sir, and more than 15 centimeters is uh, T4, region, sir. So this comes under T3. Yes, sir. So my question is, if it is a rhabdomyosarcoma, what could yes, be sir. the grade of this tumor? Uh, it's a high grade tumor, sir. Mm, high grade. Any rhabdomyosarcoma is considered as a high grade tumor. Yes. And as yes, sir, sir. sir said, some of the sarcomas may uh, spread to lymphatics. And produce yes. lymph, lymph nodal involvement. Can you enumerate yes. a few of them? Uh, synovial sarcoma, sir. Mm. Rhabdomyo sarcoma. Mm. And uh, epithelioid uh, sarcoma, sir. Mm. And uh, GSL sarcoma. And yes. uh, go through lymph nodes, as well, sir. Epithelioid sarcoma, clear cell sarcoma, uh, rhabdomyo sarcoma. Then uh, what you said, synovial sarcoma. So these are few of the sarcomas that may produce lymph nodes. Yes. Yes, sir. 
okay apart from mri do you want any other investigation uh, as i previously said for metastatic workup i did a ct chest with upper abdomen sir mm. so based on that i have uh, staged my disease as well mm. and uh, proceeded with uh, treatment sir is there any role for angiogram in this patient uh, it is uh, possible sir to if there is any suspicion of uh, neurovascular uh, engagement or abdomen you mm. can go for an angiogram mm. or uh, if there is suspected any major uh, vascular highly vascular lesions mm. we can go for angiogram sir okay okay w- what could be your uh, treatment uh, since it's a low grade tumor and it's uh, not uh, abutting any major neurovascular structures i would go ahead with a wide excision so with adequate margin mm. and uh, since there is no nodal involvement uh, the resection alone is uh, sufficient sir. and no reconstruction if necessary sir i would plan a reconstruction since it's a large tumor uh, we would go with uh, first line would be to discuss in a tumor board mm. and uh, come with a multidisciplinary team discussion sir mm. based on that uh, they suggest uh, wide excision sir Uh, any anatomical structures you have to take care in uh, while excising this uh, this much huge tumor in the uh, axillary region uh, the axillary vessels as well as uh, the neurovascular structures in that region sir so see everybody uh, want to preserve the axillary vessels axillary vein and axillary artery any other vein you have to give any specific uh, importance to protect that because of its anatomical position position in uh, long thoracodorsal bundle sir what a thoracodorsal pedicle sir mm. and uh, you know cephalic vein what is the yes. anatomy of cephalic vein related to this sir uh, cephalic vein goes from the upper limb and uh, enters the thorax by penetrating to the tibial pectoral fascia sir see it enters so, through the delto pectoral groove yes sir yes sir delto delto pectoral groove so it yes. is close to the swelling is close to the delto pectoral groove am i right or not yes sir you are sir see it is so uh, it is infiltrating the pectoral yes yes sir yes sir yes see when when uh, what we say radical mastectomy was done yes sir there is one important point cephalic vein has to be preserved yes yes or no yes, have sir. you read, read about uh, radical mastectomy nowadays uh, we are doing modified radical mastectomy we don't go near the delto pectoral groove so we don't speak yes, about the uh, cephalic vein whereas in this case it is so close to the delto pectoral yes. groove so we have to take care about the cephalic vein yes, which sir. comes which comes along that apart from as you said you have to preserve the axillary artery and vein yes sir okay you have to preserve the axillary artery and vein and you have to remove the pectoralis major muscle as much as possible to give adequate clearance yes sir yes, yes sir i will have to see. yes uh, did you try for any reconstruction as you said or uh, you have not uh, on intraoperatively uh, the lesion was uh, well uh, uh confined sir and mm-hmm. there was only minimal uh, attachment to the pectoralis mm-hmm. minor sir actually it was attached mm-hmm. to the pectoralis minor sir mm-hmm. so we resected a part of the major as well as the pectoralis minor sir mm-hmm. and uh, since the skin was lax and we had adequate uh, mm-hmm. uh, skin we were mm-hmm. able to close the uh, defect primarily sir yes now, what uh, is there any ma- margin positivity in our post op specimen no sir there was no margin positivity sir mm-hmm. you have given adequate margin yes sir is there any role for radiotherapy in this case uh, uh indications for uh, radiotherapy would be a high grade tumor or a tumor more than uh, 5 cm sir but uh, since the uh, tumor is uh, a low grade tumor uh, we were uh, able to keep the patient on follow up on sir so my point my question is is there any role for radiotherapy in this case uh, no sir as such right now there is no need for radiotherapy in this patient in future is there any role for radiotherapy in this case 
if any recurrence is yeah. uh, affected uh, we'll have to go for radio therapy yes in in future if there is any recurrence there is a possibility of radio therapy and adjuvant radio therapy in, even in recurrence surgery is the first yes, line of uh, first line of treatment we can yes, do a sir. surgery followed by radio therapy whereas in case of high grade tumors uh, primarily we use, we can use the radio therapy as adjuvant yes sir okay yes, whereas sir. In, in low grade tumors we don't give radio therapy unless the patient uh, unless the tumor recurs yes, okay sir. yes uh, how how long this patient has been operated uh one week sir he's on a post op day 10 sir Mm. Is there in, any uh, neurovascular problems or any muscle weakness or anything? No, sir. There no. is no neurovascular deficit, no motor or sensory deficit, sir. And uh, his uh, pulses are all normal, sir. Non-muscular. Is it uh, operated by a general surgeon or any onco surgeon? Uh, we presented in the tumor board, sir. They uh, suggested a wide excision. Plus reconstruction if necessary, sir. But uh, surgery was done by a general surgeon. Done by a general surgeon. See, yes, if, it, if it is present in a limb, uh, either uh, upper limb or lower limb, we do compartmental excision, yes or no? Uh, compartmental excision, if uh, necessary, if wide excision uh, puts... Uh, the clear margin cannot be given by wide excision, we go over a compartmental excision, sir. What is, uh, what is the principle behind the compartmental excision? Sir, uh, compartmental excision, in case uh, mul- multiple uh, multifocal disease is suspected or satellite lesions are suspected, sir. Good. And uh, we are not able to give an adequate margin by wide excision, we go for a compartmental excision, sir. In that case, we can go for a compartmental excision. If you, ex- uh, if you suspect more than one focus of disease. Or- yes, sir. Yes, Say so if the lesion involves more than one compartment, if you suspect there is a possibility of involvement of the second compartment, what could be your treatment in that case? Limb salvage surgery would be uh, risky, sir. So we would uh, consider the give the patient the option of uh, amputation, sir. Uh, see, it, it, it's a oh, hypo- no. it's a hypothetical question. See, it is involving one compartment, one full compartment, and just abutting the other compartment. Yes, sir. Now, what could be your uh, treatment plan? Sir, uh, we still go for a compartment excision with mm. uh, wide excision of the other compartment, sir. Now, why, why, why can't you think about radiotherapy, new adjuvant radiotherapy, and downstage the tumor and go for a compartment excision? Yes, there, sir. Is sir. it... Is it uh, okay or uh, is it uh, not okay? Sir, uh, new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy is uh, suggested in a uh, few cases such as uh, abdomen sarcoma and uh, sinovus sarcoma. Sir. Mm. Uh, new adjuvant radiotherapy, I am not aware of. Sir. You are not aware? Yes. Okay. W- what is your final diagnosis? I mean, uh, HPE diagnosis? Uh, my final HPE suggested a uh, uh, low grade fibrosarcoma, sir. Low grade fibrosarcoma. Okay. How old is the patient? 60 years, man, sir. No. What was his ECOG score? ECOG 1, sir. Uh, he was able to carry out his routine normal activities and go for work, sir. He's absolutely, yes. almost yes, absolutely sir. normal. Yes, sir. See, see, the patient comes after three years or five years with the liver metastasis, I mean lung metastasis. Yes, what could be your management? I would uh, restage the patient, sir. Look mm. for a recurrence in the primary site. Mm. And uh, if there is uh, only uh, molecular metastasis, I would uh, plan my treatment accordingly, sir. Mm. But even then, uh, metastatic disease of the sarcoma is uh, having a poor prognosis, sir. Okay. So that's all from my side. Anybody want to take over, please? Kanagavail, sir? Yes, sir. Should we allow the student to ask any doubts he has, sir? Yes, sir, of course. 
Manjunath sir and uh, others, do you have any questions, sir? Karthi, do you have any questions? Uh, I would like to know more about uh, the new adjuvant uh, radiotherapy and how we are uh, supposed to proceed with that, sir. Uh, like, is it like uh, carcinoma rectum that we give radiotherapy downstage and uh, sex, sir, or is it like uh, carcinoma breast where we go according to the initial uh, staging of the tumor, sir? No, no, no. You take one question at a time. At this point of time, uh, do you have the biopsy report of a grading in hand? Yes, sir. It's a low-grade tumor, sir. Yes, sir. Correct. So, low-grade tumor definitely should have some response. I would recommend you to uh, discuss this case in your MDD. Because yes, sir. the question is, this patient has come to you for the size, right? Yes, More sir. than anything, he doesn't seem to have any other major issues. Yes, but the question comes, will you be able to clear it in one go? Yes, like so many surgical options which have been discussed. Will you be yes. able to remove in one go? Yes. This lesion definitely looks removable. Right. Yes. The CT scan. Uh, of course, I could not see the closer cuts, how much it is involved with the chest wall asset. But it looks there is a plane in between all around for you to remove. Yes, sir. Right. The question is very dubious when you have an option to remove without any residual tumor. What is the role of new adjuvant therapy? Yes, sir. Right. So, in at least in our department, the policy what we follow is if there is even an uh, like uh, element of doubt that we will not be able to give a hundred percent clearance, then these patients definitely go for new adjuvant therapy. But yes, sir. CA rectum, CA breast, irrespective of whatever be the size, they go for new adjuvant therapy. Earlier, the concept was only for advanced stage, but now we are even sending for an early stage tumor for new adjuvant chemotherapy. Yes. So again, it depends because in our hospital, we have a MDT, which firmly believes uh, right now the policy should be new adjuvant therapy where all possible. But I'm unsure about this patient as such because um, depending on your institutional protocol, if you're going to tell new adjuvant therapy, I don't think any examiner will penalize for you. But many yes. times, soft tissue tumors, when we are waiting for the uh, new adjuvant response, tumor grows bigger or tumor metastasizes rapidly. So I may be little personally on personal ground skeptical on new adjuvant for soft tissue tumors asset, as long as the tumor is 100% removable in one go. So that is my take. Other faculty can definitely give their input so that uh, the question of new adjuvant uh, from the student need to be taken in a different perspective. Anakaran sir and uh, Heyman sir, what is your take on it, sir? Oh, sir. As far as this case is concerned, uh, I'm not for a new adjuvant, sir. We can go for a surgery, we can remove it. If at all any uh, positive margins are there, we can go for adjuvant later. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. So I think that is the final verdict, uh, Dr. Kati. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So I thank uh, you and uh, Dr. Uh, Sundar for presenting today's case. I thank all the faculty, uh, Karnakaran sir, Heyman sir. I think Heyman sir had to thank uh, you, run sir. the surgery. Thank you very much. Uh, Manjunath sir and others uh, for joining this class. Thank you very much and I look forward for next week of our meeting. Thank you all so much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Good night, sir. Good night.